Hey everyone, I hope you're having a fantastic week. I wanted to do another video on Dragon Quest 3 HD 2D Remake before it comes out. It comes out in less than a week now, I believe, depending on when this video goes up. I wanted to talk about kind of my last thoughts before I get my hands on the game. And I also wanted to talk about some big JRPG news that's coming out, like Xenoblade Chronicles X coming to the Switch. But let's start off with that Dragon Quest 3 HD 2D Remake details. Recently, they've been revealing some YouTube shorts and Instagram reels and stuff like that of the comparison between the original NES towns and locations and the remakes. And I think they just did such a magnificent job of recreating these places in their HD 2D environments. And I think doing this one-to-one -one comparison is just so smart and I love what they're doing here. It's crazy how, how much they've kept the designs all the same, but they've just made it look more realistic and modern day, I guess. So that looks incredible. Another thing, they released a newer trailer earlier last week showing like the hatching of Ramia and that was really cool. But to me, the thing that I liked the most out of that new trailer is they actually show Baramos and you get to hear Baramos talking. So I'm going to play a little clip of that because Baramos is, I don't know, he's one of my favorite Dragon Quest uh, kind of arch fiends, I guess. He's not one of my favorite characters of all time by any means, but he's just, I don't know, he looks like kind of a goof. And, I don't know, I've always loved Baramos, he looks so derpy, but at the same time, like, he is powerful, he is the first, kind of, like, brick wall that's gonna test your strength in Dragon Quest 3, so. Anyways, I'm just gonna play this clip where you can actually hear Baramos talking and his little speech to the, to the, to the party. You know that to stand against mighty Baramos is to throw away your life, and yet you still came. I don't know, to me that's just so cool to actually hear Baramos speak. I was playing Dragon Quest X this past weekend with my buddy Dro, and we were doing some of the, the maze bosses. For those of you that don't know, the mazes in Dragon Quest X are similar to the mazes in Dragon Quest Heroes 2, or more commonly known as the grottos from Dragon Quest IX. They don't have like huge dungeon designs like the grottos did. We were fighting Apex Baramos, who is like the hardest version of Baramos in the game, and you fight him as well as Baramos' soul, or like the kind of zombie undead version of Baramos. You fight them both at the same time. Yeah, I don't know. I just love Baramos for some reason. He shows up during the Christmas event in Dragon Quest X as well, and he's got his little Santa hat on, and I don't know. He's just this guy that you're supposed to take so seriously and you have to take seriously because he is a tough opponent to face off against but he's just so derpy looking and I don't know I love the guy always have always will and I'm so glad we finally get to hear him speak the next thing of course I want to talk about is Fantasian Neo Dimension coming out on December 5th for all modern consoles man I've talked about this game a few times but I am so hyped for this uh, we usually do our uh, Space Miss themed streams all December so I'll definitely have to put off my playing of this game until January but I'm going to be dodging spoilers left, right, and center. I mean, the spoilers are pretty easy to dodge because essentially this is like a remaster of Fantasian with probably extra content added in. And Fantasian's been out for quite a few years on like Apple Arcade and stuff like that. So I should be okay. But either way, super hype for this one. For those of you that don't know, this is Hironobu Sakaguchi's latest game. And dare I say Uematsu's last game he's going to be doing the score of. He's said that he is retiring and uh, yeah, I think this is the last one. If you want to hear Uematsu's latest and last soundtrack, definitely be sure to check this one out. Looks incredible, man. They've got the dioramas. Instead of the pre-rendered artwork for the backgrounds, they decided to make them all from hand. So it's got that classic PS1 JRPG feel, but with a modernized diorama look and the gameplay just looks phenomenal. The story is supposed to be really good. So yeah, looking forward to this one and I hope you guys are as well. Next up, I always got to talk about at least one non-JRPG here. So I want to talk about a new and upcoming beat-em-up I'm excited about called Mighty Morphin Power Rangers Rita's Rewind. So that one is coming out on December 10th, and it is a Power Rangers beat-em-up game. There have been a ton of those back in the Genesis and Super NES era, but this one looks like it might be the best of the bunch. The gameplay looks tight. They added a bunch of like different modes of play. So you're not always just going to be doing beat-em-up stuff. There's a lot of like driving and shooting mini games and stuff like that. So super interested in checking this one out. It just looks like a crap load of fun and I can't wait to play it with my friends.
Next up is East Memoir, The Oath in Felgana. So this is a remake of a remake of East 3. It looks way better than the previous versions of the game. This is probably going to be my jumping on point for the series. I know I played East books 1 and 2. I finished the first one, was not a big fan, so dropped the second one. They were just too... I don't know. It was like, it wasn't even like that mazy up until the, the very end got really, really mazy and it was super frustrating. But it was just like very like getting lost in the cave and not knowing where the heck to go pretty much at any time and every part of the cave looking the same. It was just so frustrating. I never knew what to do or where to go. So I ended up dropping it. Everybody keeps telling me to check out East Origins. I might check that out at some point, but this one is probably going to be the one that I jump into the series with. So I don't know when I'm going to be grabbing it, but it's definitely looking like the ultimate entry point for someone like me. Looking forward to that bad boy. Comes out January 7th. So look forward to that one. Also, I'm talking about all of these in release order. So that's why you're having to wait till the very end here for Xenoblade Chronicles X finally leaving the coffin of the Wii U and being released on the Switch. So now you can finally play every Xenoblade Chronicles game on the Switch, which is pretty cool. But unfortunately, I was not a big fan of Xenoblade Chronicles X. I like the way the story was going. I like the, uh, the exploration is bar none, like one of the best games to just explore and run around in and stuff like that. The combat was like a better version of Xenoblade Chronicles 1 but also had so much depth in all the wrong ways that I ended up hating it. So early to mid game, the game's pretty fun. You do end up getting some sweet mechs, but that is very, very late in the game. So don't get your hopes up there. When you do get your mech, the boss fights just get so incredibly difficult. It's unbelievable. The, the gameplay mechanics that you have to master will take hours and hours and hours in the worst way possible, in my opinion. And these are things that I hope that, honestly, the remaster or remake or whatever they're doing here, I think it's just a remaster. I hope these are things that they fix in the remaster to make this a good game. Because I did not like it. I have Xenoblade Chronicles X on the Wii U. I borrowed my friend's Wii U so I could play it. It's literally the only Wii U game I own. And I played it. I put a bunch of hours into it. We got... To, I think it was like chapter 10 or, or 11 or something like that and I ended up just having to having to quit I had to bail out on the game it's the only Xenoblade game I've had to bail out on huge fan of the series Xenoblade 1 2 and 3 are incredible the third one being my favorite now especially its DLC story if you haven't played Future Redeemed go out there and grab it play it right now it is so good it's so incredible especially if you've played Xenoblades 1 2 and 3 you you need to play future redeem you just have to all right when i got my hands on xenoblade chronicles x i was so stoked i love mechs i love jrpgs i love xenoblade and i just man i was so frustrated and the biggest thing that frustrated me was the fact that you had to do these mandatory side quests in order to be able to even attempt to progress the story the main problem with that is not only to my knowledge here this has been a while but not only have the, were these quests not marked at all, but they're not marked that these are the quests you need to do in order to go back and talk to them to, to progress the story missions. So you have access to none of the story missions until you do specific side quests. And if anybody knows anything about the Xenoblade series, there's a billion side quests, most of which are throwaway. Although in Xenoblade 3, they clean that up quite a bit. A lot of the side quests give really good backstory on all the characters and stuff like that. But Xenoblade 1 in particular, and that's I think what this one came out shortly after, had horrible side quests. And this game is pretty much the same as that when it comes to the side quests. They're pretty awful, and they're not marked in this one, and there's a huge city full of people in this game. You had to find the specific quest so that you could do that crappy side quest in order to gain access to the next part of the story. And it was just so incredibly frustrating. Some of the characters were decent, I guess. I don't know, man. Xenoblade X did not do it for me. Maybe it'll do it for you. I'm not saying that you shouldn't pick it up or anything like that. I'm just saying I didn't like it. And it'll be the first Xenoblade game post me getting into the series that I will not be buying day one. I'm going to wait and see if they made changes to all the issues I had with the game before even picking it up. Now, the fact that there will be an active online community may improve the game for me. I might be able to play through the game with my friends and stuff like that, which will make it a lot more manageable and a lot less rage-inducing. But overall, 
I don't know, there's so many, like, little tedious things in this game that you have to do in order to even, like, attempt to get to the next story segment that it just frustrated me to no end. Anyways, that's about all I wanted to talk about as far as some incredible JRPGs coming out soon. I have been using new editing software, so I'm gonna keep trying to do weekly videos at the very least but they might take a little bit longer because I'm learning this new editing software. It's nothing like the software I've been using before, but if you've watched my Halloween top 10 video, you could probably see that the software that I have been using lately has been glitching out big time, and I kind of just wanted to move away from it because I've been using that software for years and years, and that problem always comes up, and I have to do a whole bunch of stuff to try to make it go away for a while, and then it always comes back, so I figured, hey, it's time to finally learn how to edit on some new software. So I'm getting the hang of it, but it is going to take a little bit longer than it usually does. Anyways, guys, if you ever want to hang out live, be sure to join me right here on YouTube as well as Twitch at twitch.tv slash 3 I stream at least three nights per week. Um, we'll be streaming Dragon Quest 3 HD 2D Remake once that comes out. Be sure to also like, subscribe, and turn notifications to all if you enjoyed the video. And I will see you guys in the next one. And yet you still came.